So if you don't like that last jig that you made, do what I do, make another one. Welcome back to my shop. It's been a while since I've done a video. I had some health issues. Nothing bad. Nothing really to worry about. I'm good. I'm just getting older. That sucks. That's not good. Or is it? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm doing pretty good with the things that, that were happening. They're cured, fixed, whatever you want to call it. I also had some surgery in my eyes. Uh, if you notice, I'm not wearing glasses. In all my other videos, you see me wearing these really thick Coke bottle glasses. Well, I've had that all straightened out, and uh, I just need glasses just to see really far, basically. Um, so, for what I do in the shop here, I don't need them anymore, which is really cool. I like that. So, anyway, what I was talking about earlier, about jigs and redoing them, this is my radiusing jig, my fingerboard radiusing jig. This is the new version of it. My other one worked great. I mean, it, it, it really was very accurate and everything. It was basically, it was kind of like this. It still had these pieces here. You see it in my older, my older videos. It still had the uh, I don't know what they call this uh, a sled and a router base or something like that. I don't really have names for them, but basically they just kind of kind of slide on the radius that you you choose. And uh, the big difference was this base. This this whatever this is called. Um, this thing was a narrow rectangular box kind of high uh, it was very hard to set up I had to do a height adjustment I had to do a, 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 some kind of way to clamp it down which is kind of like what I did here uh, but I've kind of I've kind of um, perfected that and it's just a lot more accurate all my necks are flat on the back sides until after this this step here so they and they all measure roughly the same thickness so when I put it on here, it's level, it's flat, it's good to go. So it's gonna get a nice accurate thickness when I cut. Uh, so what I like about this thing is um, that I don't have to adjust that part of it and I've made it easier to adjust to hold the neck inside the, uh, the jig itself. So the neck goes in here and you push these pieces over and it acts like a clamp. You screw down these nuts, these bolts rather, and it holds it in there. The neck can't go this way because of the taper and tapering of the neck. And it won't go that way because I've got a stop over here that goes behind it. So I can do uh, fingerboards on guitars and basses with this. This little cutaway over here, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring up the camera over and show you a good shot of this later as I explain it more. But there's a, there's a cutaway over here for the headstocks to fit into. Uh, cause I have all, uh, you know, angled headstocks and, um, this piece right here, instead of gliding, following the inside of the, my last jig, it's following the outsides of it right here. So it's going to sit down in here and it's going to slide back and forth like this and it'll go this way as well. All right. So here we have a neck that needs a fingerboard radius. Nice and flat in the bottom. Like I said earlier, all my necks, my, my guitar necks, my bass necks are all flat, same thicknesses. It sits on a very flat, level surface here. These clamps have a little bit of sandpaper. They have a strip of sandpaper on the insides of them here to hold on to the neck so it won't really move around too much. And it won't really. Um, I might be a little bit overkill the way I've done this, but to me, I just want things secured. Because of the wedge in action, the neck won't be, come, be able to come this way, but it could go that way. For that, I've got a block back here that's going to be screwed down in this area for, the, for a guitar neck. That's for a bass neck. So it sits in here like this. I take this sled, which has a line on it on both sides, the center line. I'll have a center line drawn on the fingerboard, and I'll line them up 
the whole lamp, both ends here, all the way through, make sure it lines up all the way across. Once I've established that center, I'll screw these down and it'll be clamped in place and I'll put the piece down here. Once that's done, I'll take the, uh, the router base, put the router in it, sits on here, and it just follows this along, this track right here. And here's the, here's the, here's the radius that it's going to do right here, back and forth. All right. So the real specific thing about this jig, in order for me to get a 10 inch radius, okay, this is for a 10 inch radius or nine inch or, or nine and a half rather, or a 16 or a 20, whatever it is, I had to figure out the distance, uh, of the bit and calculate. And I don't even really remember exactly how I did it, what the actual number I came up with was, but through experiment, I had to figure that to get this to do a 10 inch radius, this had to be an 11 and a half inch radius. When I cut that out, it has it's 11 and a half inch radius. Reason being is the distance from where the, where the bit, well, from the, from the radius of this to the end of the bit where it touches the top of the fingerboard is about an inch and a half. And with that said, with the bit sitting down here, lower inside of this, the end of the bit is where the radius is really happening. So the radius is happening down here, not up here. So 11 and a half inch radius, by the time it gets to the end of the bit and it's running over this fingerboard, it's making it a 10 inch radius. So when I make my 16, my 20, my nine and a half, all that, um, these two pieces, they all have to be an inch and a half more of a radius in the jig side of it. Does that make sense? I hope. Basically what I'm saying is all the radius is happening down here because what the, this has got to be something different. Anyway, I, I, I'm probably not explaining it right, but uh, if you have any questions, just leave some comments in the comment section. Ask me what you need to know. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll try to explain it best I can. So this is going to be a lot better than what I had. It's, 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 I've already tried it out once. It's really, I mean, it's just as accurate, but it's easier to set things up on this one. Very much easier and to move it around and all that stuff. It just works better. So I'm going to go ahead and put my center line on this neck, this fingerboard, and I'll set it up in this jig and we'll do a wrap. <laughs>
All right, I like the way that came out. Here's my 10 inch radius gauge. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is perfect all the way down, all the way down that fingerboard, all the way. Perfect. All I got now is just to do a little bit of light sanding and get rid of some of these uh, router bit marks that it leaves. It's not really bad. It, it leaves a really, a really smooth finish. It's just, you know, it's the lumber. It's the lumber. It's going to, it's just the way it's going to mill. I would probably have to make more passes, short passes, and it would, a lot of it would go away. But just a little sanding will take care of it. So I really like the way that thing sets up. It's easy. It's quicker and easier than the last one. So I won't make another one of those. I'll, I'll stick with that. I may even just, you know, maybe improve something on it. Just, just something. Just maybe the look of it or something. It's not really the prettiest thing, but it does what it's supposed to do, as you can see. I mean, that's perfect. So this guy, he wanted the, uh, this customer wanted the 10 inch radius on this. Um, I'm going to make a 12 and a 16 and probably a 20. And what I'll do is, is just be different bases and, uh, well, a base and a, and a sled. And uh, I'll have a, a few of them around, but they don't take up too much space. I got a place to, to put them, so that would be all right in the shop. Anyway, uh, so it's good to be back. And uh, I hope this video was good to you. I hope it helps you out. Uh, if you're wanting to make a jig like this or something, you know, just uh, just go at it. Go for it. Make it happen like I do. I mean, I just, I just do it, you know. So anyway, if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with what's coming up next. I'll see you next time.